What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight team stand up. We got the man Jimmy I Roller. When you accidentally break a world record. Let's check it out. I have a feeling they're talking about Curry, but you never know. He might go for the spectacular one. He'd like to take off from behind the foul line. Is he gonna do it? It's like the Did 80s? Yes, he does. Did y'all see that? Now, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not the furthest dunk ever? What do you mean? I mean? There's been hundreds of athletes who've dunked from the free throw line, many of which were done on camera for the world to see. But none of these dunks were from this far out. So we just That's the free throw the line. dunk ever recorded and it came from a man who wasn't even a basketball player in fact this dunk occurred back in 1992 in a dunk contest where none of the contestants were basketball players but they were all really good athletes a couple baseball players by the name of barry bonds and ken griffey jr i know ken griffey with those guys and, barry bonds and a few football players including a guy named chris, chris carter, carter and another by the name of michael irving, irving football players have seen many dunk contests but you've never seen one like this bro you know what's actually crazy what i thought about dog like i feel like in a future all-star games in the nba bro if you really want like nba if you really want to sell and viral and have just many life like long lifetime like clips and highlights you need to incorporate like add in like like 1v1 with like rappers influencers like you know what i'm saying like everything you know what i'm saying like you need to incorporate a 1v1 during all-star weekend and maybe even like the uh, rappers influencers you know etc etc whatever um you know the uh the, the dunk contest and three-point contest man y'all need to spice up the all-star game y'all should do that today's video is sponsored by raid hey, shadow hey, you know fast i'm out myself and brothers and say that may not raid and if you I hear start your prod only so damn the 2012 right, we contest was um well let's just say it wasn't very good no yeah. <laughs> he said let's just say it wasn't very good that's dang that's what they didn't show me it took them like two times we are we are dang how many times he took you know what who am i kidding this year's NBA dunk contest was atrocious. No stars, so many failed attempts that I was actually wondering if the network was going to go to a commercial break in the middle of an alley-oop. Bro, and like, and then why were y'all trying to get me to react to the full fur version where it had all I misses? Never, why would y'all want me to ever, suffer? Ever thought I'd see the day where a skills challenge was more entertaining than a dunk contest. And yet, here we are. But I'll cut these young guys some slack because honestly, the bar has been set extremely high. We've seen just about everything there is to see in the world of dunking. With the internet and social media providing us with every dunk and angle and prop and athlete imaginable, I suppose it's next to impossible to really impress fans these days. I am being dead serious when I say last week I saw a man pull off a double East Bay on my Instagram feed and oh. I wholeheartedly was kind of impressed for a moment and then I kept scrolling. That ain't right. We are spoiled with endless amounts of crazy basketball Double content 24-7. So these days, you gotta get creative with what you bring to the table. And when it comes to the NBA Slam Dunk Contest, I really don't know how much crazier things can get. Which is exactly why the NBA needs to implement an entirely new system to the age-old event. A new variable to the Slam Dunk Contest that I think would make things infinitely more interesting. Something that we've actually seen before. Way back in the late 80s and early 90s. What? Back in 1988, Foot Locker had a stroke of genius when they thought to themselves, hey, what if we had a slam dunk contest, but without any basketball players? Brilliant. Introducing the Foot Locker Slam Fest, featuring all your favorite athletes. Why the heck did they take that out? Like, even them putting it right here in the All-Star Weekend this year would have been, like, like even better, bro. Even if they didn't have the best dunks. They don't usually do. Now, like bro, I would have bro, I would have loved to see like someone like Debo Smith or somebody like in there, like you know what I'm saying, Lamar Jackson in the dunk contest, bro. Slam Fest was That's way better than just being basic. But other than a mention of the events in future broadcasts or I flight reaction on one v one, bro, that would have been the most viewed contest, thing in All Star. So we're just gonna act like it didn't exist. Is this historically accurate? No. Do I care? No. 
89. One year later, Foot Locker brought back the Slam Fest and all of its greatness, and immediately some of the biggest names in sports entered in on the action. NFL Hall of Famer and that one player I used to absolutely trash my brother with in NFL Street. Oh, Eric Dickerson. Was one of the contestants. The multi-sport legend Deion Sanders also took part in the contest, adding to the list of athletic feats he can do that most of us can't. One of the greatest track and field athletes of all time, Carl Lewis, was also competing that night. In just its second year, the Slam Fest was drawing in some of the biggest names in sports. But this name right here may look familiar. Mike Conley. Yeah. Not the Mike Conley we know from the Utah Jazz, but his father, Mike Conley. Oh, that's dope. Mike was an absolute freak of an athlete, but more on him in a little bit. This slam fest was a totally new concept. It was fresh. There was $50,000 in prize money on the line, and it was commentated by Ahmad Rashad Will. and the Wilt Chamberlain. If only the dunks were as awesome as the concept itself, maybe we'd have heard of this event sooner. In the following year, the Slam Fest made its third go around with a few new faces. One of them being long jump world record holder Mike Powell, who stopped in to show off his alien like jumping ability. The fans were loving it, the energy was electric, the Slam Fest was a thing of beauty. One year, Olympic weightlifter slash strongman slash your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, Mark Henry, joined in on the action. Really? Now, Mark <laughs> is and was a very large man. At 6'3", 370 pounds, Mark might just be the whitest human being to ever dunk a basketball. Really? I mean, the dude spent his days moving a thousand pounds of weight on his back, so I guess dunking a basketball was the least impressive thing he did that afternoon. Look at this man palm this basketball like a grapefruit. Damn. Point eight to advance to the finals. What a story that would be if he would have the Heavy as dunker? I am thoroughly impressed and equally terrified. Here's something you don't Bro, I'm doing that dunk contest. by June, bro. There's Very no excuse. He's literally 400 pounds, bro. Better. Completely legal in this dunk contest. One year, the event even featured a boxer. You truly never knew what you were going to get in the Foot Locker Slam Fest. But in 1992, Foot Locker really pulled out all the stops to bring in some of the biggest names in all of sports. Barry Bonds, Deion Sanders, Mike Powell, Mike Conley Sr., Chris Carter, Derek Thomas, Michael Irvin. All of these incredible athletes showing up to a dunk contest for $50,000 and bragging rights. Sheesh! And what were the results of this star-studded contest, you ask? Well, in the first round, Ken Griffey Jr. was eliminated by former Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown. Oh, and by the way, this dunk earned Griffey a 9 out of 10 from the judges. Don't worry, it gets better. Next, long jumping legend Mike Powell faced off against all pro linebacker Seth Joyner. This matchup was a foregone conclusion before it even began. Because Mike Powell is one of the greatest jumpers the world has ever seen. In fact, to this day, Mike holds the long jump world record in track and field. And he set that record just months before this event. How far did Mike leap? Well, here's the free throw line at 15 feet out. Here's the high school. I mean, free yeah, point. he's Olympic here's jumper the to help. Three point line, nearly 24 feet out, and all the way out here is Mike's world record long jump in the what? summer of '91. What? Twenty-nine. Three feet, point line. Four and a half inches. Mike was a human cheat code, and he breezed through the first round of competition. Next was American volleyball player Adam Johnson, Bro. Against, arguably the greatest baseball player ever, who couldn't get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds. And, uh, Bonds won this round. Deion Sanders advanced to the next round after defeating Mariner pitcher Eric Hansen. And on the other side of the bracket, the NFL nearly had a clean sweep with Rob Moore, Chris Carter, and Michael Irvin all advancing to the next round, joined by Mike Conley. And this is where things really heat up. In the second round, we have quite possibly the most 90s looking picture I've ever seen in my life. Barry Bonds versus Deion Sanders. <laughs> that is a 90s looking contest. picture. Give it to me! Give it to me! Just give it! If I go down, man, I'm gonna go down trying. I don't say I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna try it here. He it looked like a, like a fresh Prince of Bel Air line he just said. And he did fairly well. Look at him right Why here. Why wasn't Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame? I know about baseball very little bit. I don't know that. I just, I just know most of the players, like the really good ones. After missed both of his attempts, Bonds advanced to the semifinals. On the other end of the bracket, Mike Conley threw down one of the better dunks of the competition with this double pump reverse jam. 
And after seeing Damn. this man jump, it's crazy to think that his son is a 15-year NBA vet while being half the pure athlete. Right, father. Mike Conley has and no so the athleticism. Round came down to the best long jumper in the world. Bro, the long jump, bro, jumper, bro, he done better than bro. I, I think, bro, there's some NBA players that don't even do that, bro. Longest dunk you've ever seen in your life. Pals out for two. Jim Valvano and Conley has posted a nine-nine. Regina Conley looks a little bit worried, but she really shouldn't be. A husband's in an enviable position. We've already stated only a 10 can beat him. Right? And he has stated that he might go for the spectacular one. He'd like to take off from behind the foul line. Is he going to do it? Can he do it? Yes, he does. He now, did it. Like many of you, I've seen a lot of dunks in my life. But never have I seen someone dunk from this far out. Dig through every NBA game, every NBA and non NBA. Bro, that was contest. literally the free you throw line. Am I tripping? Further than this. In fact, from what I've seen, all of the furthest dunks caught on camera are from guys who didn't even play in the NBA. Former college hooper Alex Austin is one of few to actually dunk from behind the free throw line, but he was just slightly behind it. Not as far as Conley. We gotta find something further. Here's a dunk from former world class high jumper Jim Dilling. A dunk from a couple inches outside the free throw line. Incredibly impressive. But still, Jim didn't take off as far as Conley did. We gotta go further. And I think I found the closest thing. A dunk from another world-class high jumper named Jordan Wessner. Wessner is an insane athlete who posts some incredible jumping feats on his Instagram. From videos of him jumping over cars to a video of him almost touching the rim from damn near the three-point line Whoa. to this video of a free throw line dunk as far as we've ever seen. Bro, these dudes gliding. Insane. But that rim looks like it's seven and a half feet, no doubt. Or Jordan's? It's hard to tell. Man, I'm, I'm doing all these dunks in June, bro. Which means that from what that I can me. find, the longest dunk ever recorded took place in a dunk contest with no NBA players by a world-class triple jumper whose son now plays in the NBA. This is why we love sports. Now for a moment, can we all imagine if the NBA were to create an event like this during All-Star Weekend? They could do some sort of tournament bracket system. NBA players oh. versus all the other sports. And then at the end, have the last two contestants face off for a shot to win a prize. Let's say $500,000 and a trophy to take home. This would be amazing. Both the NFL and MLB are in their off season, so you know they'd be available to participate in the event. And quite possibly the best part, dunk? the league in which the winner of the event plays in that gets to have bragging rights and the Devontae Adams should do that. Could you imagine if a baseball player won the World of Sports Dunk Contest and the MLB got to keep the NBA Slam Dunk Trophy for a year? Bro, it would be madness. That would be sure. that would make the them NBA go harder in dunk contests. Walk away victorious, damn near every year. But who wouldn't tune in in the off chance that some six foot running back pulls out an East Bay and goes home with the crown? Imagine if we had a dunk contest event during All Star Weekend that looked like this. With NBA players and NFL players, MLB players, a track <laughs> athlete, a boxer, screw it, throw in a golfer. You could not convince me that this event wouldn't be the most watched and entertaining event during All-Star Weekend. Maybe the idea of losing a dunk contest to guys who aren't even basketball players would light a fire under some of the best players and dunkers in the league. At the very least, we would all get the chance to see something that we've never seen before. And that sure as hell beats NFT necklaces as dunk props. <laughs> and as always, he threw straight at NFTs, man. As usual, man, coming out of the rest of the next minute, I'm going to roll to the fire!